Today I'm going to be putting a group of four-month-old pullets out on pasture and discussing the benefits of doing just that. This is my mobile coop here that we're going to move out onto pasture, but we'll get these chickens corralled up. I need to clip their wings and get them ready. Every year I like to put a number of my birds out on pasture, and I think that there's numerous benefits in doing so. I have some anecdotal evidence which I'll share with you. Last year I purchased 50 Novagen Browns. I sold off half of those to somebody who kept them under confinement. And their birds completely stopped laying during the molt period, whereas our birds remained highly productive during that same period for the first 18 months. And this has just been a consistent pattern that I've noticed over time that birds that are in a confinement type of a situation and don't have room to get out and do what chickens like to do, which is naturally forage and be out and be free, they're going to be less productive. So from the standpoint of productivity, it's a total win to get them out on pasture or in some kind of other modified free range type of an environment. Now the first thing I'm going to need to do is to transfer these birds into these dog carriers. Quick anatomy of the wing structure here is you've got the primary feathers here are these longer feathers and then when it gets to these shorters those are called the secondaries and you can either clip the primaries or the secondaries but what I like to do is actually clip both primaries and secondaries up to what are called the coverts. Hold on, hold on chicken. Up to what are called the coverts. The shorter line of feathers right here, you don't want to clip beyond that, but I'll clip all the way up to the coverts along that line in its entirety. If you clip one side, what that'll do is it'll create an imbalance and the chickens won't really be able to fly. But I like to actually clip both sides and since these are going out on pasture, I'm going to keep them fairly short for that reason. Today I actually had some birds that were flying and trying to get out of the, the chicken yard, so um, it's probably a good time to do that. Another thing of note is if you look at these wings right here, when these wings are in their growth stage, they will be filled with blood, which will be much darker, and you'll actually see the blood in there, and you don't want to clip when they're in that stage, but these are completely fine to clip. My preferred method of controlling the chickens while I'm clipping them is to use my legs to control their legs. Because if you don't, they'll scratch you up pretty good. And then I'll use my legs and control their legs. And then I can easily just come and cut along that line of coverts. There's one. There's two. If you're interested to know how it is that I built this coop, I will be linking at the conclusion of this video. Because they're getting out every day and not confined to just specifically the square footage of their coop, there's going to be less aggression within your flock and you'll be able to run higher numbers in a smaller space. This panel is just another way to make this more predator resistant so that the chickens won't be able to dig themselves out and there won't be any predators that will be able to come in from the bottom. How I prefer to run this tractor is using it in combination with electric fencing. So I'm not moving it every day, but rather about every seven to 10 days, I'll wind up moving this entire operation elsewhere. I'm going to start off with a fairly small paddock, but I will be adding additional sections of this electric fence to expand outwardly. Because the animals are out foraging every day, it's also going to help dramatically reduce your feed costs.
This fresh water is overflow from an off-grid water system that I located and developed about a year and a half ago. Pasturing your chickens has a direct benefit to your rangeland and your pasture through their activity of depositing their manure, but also in the reduction of the parasitic load from all of the insects and grubs and other things that they're going to eat. And then if you run the chickens in behind your ruminants, they'll be able to comb through all that manure and extract all of that larva, thereby reducing the amount of flies and other insects that you're going to have. This is called bulbous bluegrass and there's a lot of seed in the heads here and the chickens like this quite a bit. Chickens out on pasture are also going to have greater menu options and a much more diverse selection than birds that are under confinement. And as a result, you're going to have a higher nutritional profile for the end product, whether that be meat or eggs. One seemingly obvious benefit, but certainly one worth mentioning, is the less time that the chickens are in the coop is going to equal less time cleaning the coop. Another thing that I like to do whenever the chickens are out in an environment like this is to ensure that they have some kind of lean-to or place that they can seek refuge from not only the weather, but it's also protection from aerial predation. I don't electrify the fence in the daytime. This is merely just turned on at night, which acts as another layer of protection from predators. You counted 12 or 13? These are just some of the benefits we've observed keeping chickens outside of confinement and by no means is this an exhaustive list. I'm sure the comment section will have a few more to add. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.